Welcome to the Barbarian Hour podcast, where we conquer the impossible. The Barbarian Hour podcast is presented by Barbarian Apparel. Here is Jared Opfer and Zeb Miller. Are you ready? All right, Coach Brees, welcome. What's up, guys? Yeah. What, what's up? Uh, Not much. So, what's new uh, for the storm? Ah, lots, lots of stuff. We actually, we actually get to have guys around this summer. Um, we had this master plan for like, I don't know, I guess this is the third year actually going into my fourth summer, I guess. And uh, I've never been able to have guys on our campus yet. I either got the job after they were already gone and went home and then we had to get some buy-in to have guys stay and train in the summer. And then last year we had all these guys that wanted to stay and train and we weren't allowed in our own room. So <laughs> incrementally we were figuring out how to do the, the summer working out thing um, little, little by little. So, you know, that, that's the, that's the big exciting change for us is the guys that want to do stuff this summer are actually allowed and we don't have to go find a basement or a garage or whatever else they were using last year to work out. They actually can use their own room, which is pretty exciting. So Jeff breeze in his it's, this is the fourth season. This will be the fourth year you're going to at Lake Erie college in Paintsville, Ohio, right? Yes. Okay. So where were you before Lake Erie college? Uh, What's the coaching career and what's the path been for Jeff breeze throughout the country? Oh, geez. Well, it's probably easier if I do this in reverse. So right before Lake Erie, I was at Buena Vista University in Storm Lake, Iowa, which coincidentally, the high school mascot of Storm Lake High School is the exact same mascot as the Lake Erie College Storm. They have the exact same tornado. So that that was an interesting little tidbit along the way. Uh, But I was a head coach at Buena Vista for four years before that. Um, I was at NC State as the director of operations through like the start of, you know, NC State becoming what NC State is now. I was there at the very beginning of that. Um, Before that, I was at Northern Illinois. Then I was at a Penn State branch campus way back in the day, started a program there, worked for the National Wrestling Coaches Association for about a year. Um, I pretended to be Jason Bryant for about a year and ran Intermat. So now me, Jason Bryant and Willie Saylor have all had the same job. Um, and then, uh, uh, right before that I was, uh, I helped start the program at Seton Hill. I was the first graduate assistant at Seton Hill o- over in Greensburg. That's, that's the quick coaching rundown. I don't know how many different States that was, but it was, it was a while. I, I didn't, I didn't get real settled anywhere for, for a while. I got good at living out of a suitcase. So you talked, uh, you know, where you've been and now you've, you know, you just shared with us, you're finally settling in what seems to be a normal off season, right? Uh, we talked before about your recruiting class, fill us in on the recruiting class. What do you guys have going on? Yeah. So I think it's an awesome class. Um, the crazy world that is recruiting. I don't know that we're still a hundred percent done. Every day that we think we're done, somebody else reaches out. And we're like, ah, oh, this kid's way too good to be like, nah, the, we're all full. Um, or something crazy happens in the transfer portal. So I, I don't know that you're ever fully done recruiting. Um, but we honestly thought we were done recruiting back in November. Um, we, got, we had a really good group of guys that signed in November. Um, you know, I think we had a 10 person class by November with uh, a lot of guys that won state titles, placed really high in Ohio. Um, you know, I can actually go and talk about them name by name, but I'm almost afraid to now because I'm gonna yeah. forget to say somebody's name and they're it's gonna be mad at class, me. Right? It's a huge, it huge is, class. and it didn't start out that way. It was kind of um it started out where we said, Hey, we're gonna have 10 guys at the most in this class. We're gonna try and knock it out of the park with uh with like five or six, and, and we started super early on those guys. Um, and then pieces just kept falling in place, like it was, it was wild. Like, Hey, we had, we'll use Jack Haskin as a great example. Jack Haskin seems to know everybody in the entire country and they're his best friend. So Jack says yes. And then everyone's like, well, I know Jack, Jack's a good dude. Like I'd love to wrestle with Jack. And it just kind of kept snowballing. So what started out as like a four or five man class, I think turned into 10 guys by November 
Um, and we're still right around that. We didn't add another 10. I think we're probably going to be 13 altogether. We're bringing in a transfer um, at heavyweight, which um, has been an area of need for us. Coach Bearden just told me the other day, um, we've never qualified a guy for nationals at heavyweight. And so hopefully we've, we've got enough guys in the stable now that we can actually get that done. Um, we've been really close a couple of times, but uh, you know, there were a couple of years there where we were like, man, who's going to wrestle heavyweight? Uh, we were very lucky to have two good senior heavyweights my first year. And then they both graduated and I started looking around and said, well, nobody weighs over 200 pounds in this room. This might be a problem. So it was a couple year process. Um, now we're three or four guys deep at heavyweight. Um, like I said, we're still working on a couple of guys, but um, I would say our probably our bigger focus is kind of working on building out the coaching staff um, and trying to bring another guy or two on and in certain roles to kind of help manage. We have a really big team now. Um, what, what's purposely the roster size? Uh, we're going to be over 40 guys next year, um, which is a little bigger than I'd like to have, like truthfully. Um, not because I don't want any of the guys that we have, just 40 is a lot. Mm -hmm. So we actually were at this bigger roster number knowing that we have some graduation coming up and we're going to settle back into like that 30 to 35 sweet spot probably over the next couple of years versus kind of what I walked into where we, uh, you know, I think we had maybe 18 guys. Once we did the first team meeting and I said, this is how things are going to be different. I think we had 18 guys the first year. Um, and we knew seven of them were going to graduate. So <laughs> In that, in that time frame, we went from, all right, we have 11 returners to now we have 40 guys. We're going to graduate six to 10 next year, depending on where some guys make some choices on their extra year and things like that. Um, and we'll still be at a nice manageable roster size. So it's been, so it's been had, a work in progress, but we're there, I think. You had your first All-American in D2. Congratulations. Chris Dreggy at 197 pounds. He took eighth. And uh, first off, that guy's pretty tough. He's he's going to be a face puncher, he told me, but he's also going to get a graduate degree in business, I want to say, but he wants to be a face puncher, an MMA guy. Do you know, like you said, do you have your returning All-American coming back? Who's coming back? Because everybody gets this extra year. What's your situation with that as far as your All-American, Chris Dreggy, and, and who's going to be on the team next year? Yeah, so Chris is definitely coming back. Um, that took all of about 45 seconds after the national tournament was over. Um, I think the only scenario in which he wasn't coming back is if he won a national title last year, that's still his goal and his full out plan. Um, he wants to win a national title. So when he didn't do that, and we had to have a pretty frank conversation with him to be like, dude, you just were a freaking all American, like smile. It's okay. Like it's, it, this is a good thing. Like we can, we can be mad that we didn't win it in 48 hours. Be happy, dude. You just, you did something that not a lot of people do. Um, so he definitely, that was a short, easy conversation. He was coming back. There wasn't much I could say to tell him otherwise, honestly. Um, so he'll be back and John Penfold will be back for one more year as well. John's been in our lineup for most of the last three years between ever between 174 and 197. Um, so he'll be back as well. And then everybody else that could have gotten an extra year um, is moving on. Brandon Tenney may, maybe would have come back um, just because he was the, the odd man out and the weird, like we should have taken three to nationals in every weight, but the NCAA reduced our qualifier pool this year across the board. So he was one of the, he was literally the first third placer out that didn't qualify for nationals. And he wow. lost the number one and number two in the country in the regional. Oh. Um, he, he might've come back, um, but he got married before the start of this past year. Um, he spent most of the year um, honestly back home because he had a better training situation when we weren't allowed in our own room and he got to spend time with his wife. So he was only with us for a small part of the year. Um, and, and now I just got a call from him a couple of days ago. He's got, he's got a baby on the way. So no more wrestling for Brandon Tenney. He's going to go on and do like real grown man stuff. Um, and, and very excitedly. So, um, so he won't be back. And then uh, everyone else in the class um, that was set for this graduation is they're, they're moving on and, and doing the, again, the, like the real world big boy stuff. I get to continue to live in the, 
not real world and, and coach wrestling. So I'm pretty happy. They're moving on into the actual real world where they get to make real life decisions. So, so you mentioned trying to run out your coaching staff. What are, what are the, some of the qualities you're looking for? Um, you know, explain what you're looking for to, to round out your staff. Yeah. So I think probably the biggest thing that we're really looking to do is, is find somebody to help with our RTC in the summer. Um, you know, and, and we're self-aware, like we're not the Nittany Lion wrestling club. Like I'm not putting six dudes on the Olympic team. That doesn't mean I can't use all of the benefits of being a regional training center to help the guys that are in our program right now, get the most out of their college experience. Um, and so we're, we're really looking for somebody to help in that role. Um, as, as much as anything, um, you know, they can definitely, uh, definitely be a part of the staff throughout the year too, but I like having the flexibility of an RTC coach. There's, there's things you can do as an RTC that you can't do as a college program and vice versa. Um, you know, nothing shady or like below board. There's just different sets of rules. It's, it's actually a little bit convoluted sometimes. Um, you know, things like, I'll just use an example if I wanted to bring a coach in right now, that's not truly on our coaching staff just to like show something for a day. Cause they have a great skill set and something and they happen to be in town. I can't do that without them taking a, a six hour recruiting test and making them a volunteer assistant and all these other hoops where if I have a regional training center coach, they can, uh, they can come in and do a workout as long as the guys that are in the room are regional training center eligible. So there's just some flexibility that, that goes with that. Um, and so that's kind of, I would say that's probably our biggest focus. Um, nobody from our coaching staff left from last year, um, except for coach Uzalak. Cause he actually, he's graduated and moving on to the real world now. So he was a student assistant, but everybody else is back. Coach Porter's back. Coach Bearden's back. Coach Einel, coach Lieb. Um, did you start so really don't have any big changes? We're just trying to add on a little bit. Did you start the RTC there or was that already in place when you were there? When you came no, there? I, I started it. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm giving away secrets. Maybe I don't want anybody to watch this, but <laughs> it's actually not that hard to be an RTC. Um, it's really not. You need to have like four guys that have wrestled fairly high level freestyle somewhere in their high school career. Um, so it's really not that hard to become one. It's just a, a bunch more paperwork and some compliance. And so I think, some places don't do dive deep into that because it's one more thing they got to keep track of. Um, I, to Reap me, it's benefit, worth it right? because it gives us some gives us some more flexibility and allows us to do some things that maybe we wouldn't ordinarily be allowed to do. I mean, and we sincerely want to start putting guys on world teams. I mean, we don't have to just because we're a small little little school in Painesville, Ohio. That half the time when I pick up the phone, they go, "Okay, where are you located?" Like we're, we still do some of that that doesn't mean we can't have guys that are good enough to make world teams down the road. If they start to commit to it early on. And again, probably, you know, cadet world teams with kids in the local area that work out in our RTC and, and junior world teams with our young, young, like freshmen, sophomores. I don't have the illusion that we have anybody that's beaten David Taylor right now, but we can eventually get to the point where we could win something at U twenties. I mean, we've had guys in the blood round there already. Chris Dreggy was an all American at U 23s. Like we're already doing some of that. Um, but that's without a guy fully devoted to freestyle right now. Okay. I got to talk about coach Porter's uh, tech talks. Ah, I love it. Yes. Listen, I'm like a fan. First off, that guy is an artist. Let's get that out of the way. Yeah, but I thought you weren't on Tic Tac. I'm not. He puts all the tech talks on Facebook and I'm his Facebook friend. <laughs> he is first off that guy's a craftsman he is an artist he makes choppers and he makes custom cycles he and he lives right down the road from me he doesn't live far from me he lives 10 minutes down the road in, in parkman ohio and uh just across the reservoir actually and he is first off he's getting better at editing videos which i'm the worst <laughs> editing video person there is on the planet but he's getting better at that and he's he's obviously he's super smart and he can make anything out of any this guy is the MacGyver of cycling. Like like motor motorcycles, choppers, and they're amazing. He, and he rides cross country in custom choppers that he's made. It's amazing. Yeah, he, he's incredible and he can scrap. Yeah, he can definitely scrap still. Um, no, I saw cycles. Definitely go get some swag, hit him up. 
I mean, that honestly, the fact that Coach Porter is so good with what he does outside of wrestling is a big reason why I get to keep him around. He's able to make a living doing motorcycles, and I, I don't know. He might be on his route to being, like, TikTok famous here soon, so we'll see. But he's able to he's able to take care of himself in that front, and, you know, we help him out a little bit through the program. But, you know, it's a beautiful part of being in the area of Ohio we are. We have people that love wrestling – that are just there and want to be in the room, want to be a part of it. Um, and like, he's very a part of it. There's not a day where he does not go live. Like this guy, I love him. He's crazy. We're at nationals. He gets kicked in the face during the warm up. probably needs stitches may or may not have had a concussion, just casually walks back into the hotel room and is like with a big thing of gauze in his mouth. He's like, Hey, Chris kicked me in the face. I, I got to get a shower. Uh, I'll meet you over there. And then was sitting in his corner for the all American round matches. Like this is all within, like I would have been in the hospital. Like uh, there, his lip was gross looking and he was just kind of, like, yeah, it's whatever. Like, I'm good. I just, I was like, did you finish the warm up? He goes, Oh yeah, yeah. No, no big deal. Not a problem. Gets a shower, comes over. Couldn't eat for like two days after that. But oh, like, that's just his mindset. We had a job to get done. He was going to worry about his mouth hurting later. It wasn't a big deal. Um, and that's, that's from a guy just cause he loves wrestling and he likes to, likes to invest in guys. He is gifted as a fabricator. He's gifted. Like if my dad, I'm going to start showing my dad some of the videos. He's a gifted fabricator. Like what he can do with all the different weldings. It is incredible. Like I watch it. The guy is gifted at fabbing. He, yeah, it's, it's unreal what he does. And he also can be a hack when he wants to. It's like amazing. Like he's got like some like hillbilly engineering, but he's also got like this real high end polished side to him. He's really good, man. Like I, he, what he's doing is really difficult. Like I, I, I got a lot of respect for him. I like getting kicked in the face every now and again too. Not as a 42 year old dad you know, dad, <laughs> but like he's tough. Oh, he's a Gardner Webb guy. He wrestled for our, uh, for coach Elliot at Gardner Webb. Good dude. And him and his brother both wrestled at Gardner Webb. Right. And they're from oh. Burton, Ohio, right down the road here. So shout Don't out let to him. I saw cycles. Is it? I saw cycles. Yep. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. That guy's tough. And you're lucky to have a guy like that, but I love it. I love it. Hey, as a matter of fact, I guess maybe the segue, will I see him June 5th? Will he be around June 5th at, uh, at Cedar Point? He won't. He's actually taking his bike um, to Rhode Island. He's taking a bike trip up, like, up the coast. He said he's never been into New England. So he's taking a little vacation time. We actually uh, – we have one of our other assistants is going to be there, and then we have, uh, we have a surprise guest that I guess will be revealed on June 5th coming in to help us coach that day. Nice. Nice. I got a, I got a text on my way home tonight. Con- confirming it so for right now it is a uh, surprise guest but we'll, we'll have somebody that, that you're not expecting to see there with us on the fifth hey jared real quick just give us a quick rundown of what's going on june 5th at cedar point with oac yeah having a uh, youth uh we have k-8 division in high school run in the morning and then the afternoon uh you know group uh you know teams in the area colleges uh you know with the u23s moving uh Got doing some duels for the for the college age guys and uh, freestyle duels. So, looking forward to that. And you know, Lake Gary, you know, bringing their club club down, uh, Kent State, Cleveland State, um, a couple of the PA schools. So it, it should be a great event and uh, getting the guys back on the mat. So I know Coach Brees and I've been talking about it uh, for a minute here um, and going back and forth how that's going to look. But uh, getting some duels, getting the guys on the mats, getting getting everyone some matches. So. Yeah, we're, we're ex- really excited to be able to take the Compound Great Lakes Club there and not have to make the trek to uh, Omaha all over again. Like, I appreciate USA Wrestling finding a way to make U23s happen twice in the same year. Like, I'm not, I'm not hating on that. I am a little bit bitter that it was probably supposed to be in Geneva, Ohio. Right. Um, yeah. Twice this year, and now it's in Omaha twice this year. Um, but we really didn't want to make the trek to Omaha twice in the same year. We did it back in November. Um, this, this, this event at at Cedar point makes it so much more accessible for so many more of my guys. Um, we don't have to figure out flights and hotels and and all of that. And, and we honestly get to wrestle at, um, 
you know, a level that I think we can be very competitive on. I know we're very competitive on, um, but we don't get a chance to wrestle. You know, I, I don't know what their club names are. Maybe Golden Pride and Viking Wrestling Club. I don't, I don't know what it is. I, I no offense to those guys. I just don't know the name of their freestyle club. But we don't get to wrestle Mac schools very often. And we get to have a day where we get to show up and wrestle all Mac schools. And then there's, you know, our, our little group of guys, again, from this small school that nobody's supposed to know, um, there with, with all the big boys. And so, again, another advantage of having the club and the RTC, um, you know, compound Great Lakes is, you know, it's, we've been very busy. I was explaining to one of our guys the other day, want to know why we weren't doing U23s. And I said, do you realize we've traveled to more freestyle stuff than Penn State has this year? <laughs> we, there's a, there's a, a certain amount of time and effort that goes into making these things happen, guys. Like, we're, we're going to stay local for this. <laughs> well, with that many guys on the team, you know, coming up this year too, that, you know, changes the budget probably drastically too, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. You get more guys, you don't get more budget very often. So, right, right. um, and, and w- with having more buy-in for what we're doing with, uh, with freestyle and Greco each year, I mean, the guys that we're recruiting, um, have a pretty deep basis in that i mean almost every guy coming in is going to be rtc eligible for us right away so they've wrestled a lot more freestyle and greco and the guys on the team that are already here our returning guys are buying in more and more my first year we had one guy at u23s was chris draggy funny story chris draggy is now an all-american but um chris was the only guy and then the following year i think we had like four or five guys and you know this this year I think we had 10 or 11 guys at Northeast regionals. Um, Not even like a big time world level event, just guys excited to go see what they could do. So we're, we're little by little getting the buy into that. I know not everybody's big on freestyle, but I'm big on, you can only do so many standups in a year before you decide you don't like wrestling anymore. So we're, we're a little bit more freestyle heavy than maybe some people will take the learning curve of getting off the bottom it takes maybe takes us a little bit longer to get there in November and December, but um, it's it makes it more fun for everybody. I think it should be a great event. And I know you're going to be on the road. Um, I'll get you a link though. We'll, we'll have it streaming on Track Wrestling. That way you can kind of you know keep track of what's going on, and I'll get you a free. Maybe link. You maybe you should. Maybe you shouldn't. This may or may not cause a fight in the Reese household. I, I <laughs> promised my wife a vacation that weekend. Well, it's archived, so, so you I'm, can go back I'm and watch it. At your woods, watching matches, it might be a, it might be a problem. I might have to watch after the fact. Right, exactly. It, it'll be archived, <laughs> so you can jump right on. But yeah, we're gonna have it uh, here recorded. Bloomsburg, Binghamton, Clarion's bringing two teams: Cleveland State, Lock Haven, Kent. You know, other you know, like it's a. Like you said, they're clubs, but um, you know, it should be uh, should be a great weekend, and you know, everyone's bringing some extras. I think trying to get extra matches in, and uh, you know, Jim Spielman and crew will be there, you know, officiating. So, it should be a, a awesome weekend. So, Coach Breeze, ultimately, at the end of the day, you know, you've been to a D three, your last one in Buena Vista in Iowa, and now you're at a D two. Um, ultimately what's your vision? You know, you got your first all American, you kind of got the ball rolling. What's the vision for Lake Erie college wrestling? What can you guys do? You know, you won a league championship your first year there. That was crazy. I covered that. You guys won the, uh, GMAC, right. And where do you see the program going? You've already won a championship. You've already had an all American Where What's, what's the limit for you guys? I don't, I don't know what the limit is. I don't know that we really set a limit. Um, we're, we're very seriously, it, it's getting cliche cause I say it every year now, but it's just the truth. Like we truly, we want to be a top 10 team in the country at the national tournament every year. We want to be top 10 in the country academically every year. Um, and we want to try and win our conference cause our conference is really freaking good. We probably beat somebody that's in the top 10 in the country to win our conference every year. So that that's really what we set out to do. And then from there to, to me, I, I, the people that, especially if you haven't already done it, the people that are like, we're going to win a national title this year. That seems kind of crazy to me. Not that we can't win a national title, but let's talk about putting ourselves in position to win a national title. And then if we get the right breaks and we peak right and the pieces fall where they're supposed to, 
we can win a national title, but we don't go from where we're at to just winning a national title. And that's the only thing we talk about. There's a lot of little good things that we can accomplish along the way. And so that's kind of where the perspective of the program is. Let's just get to where we're in the top 10 every year. And when that gets to the point where we don't even think about that being a thing, that's just part of the culture and it's ingrained into what we do. Then maybe we can string a couple of titles together. I mean, that's what the best teams in D2 do for the most part. You know, there might be a stray team here or there that like that jumps in there. But I mean, I don't have a problem t- saying how good St. Cloud is because St. Cloud's really freaking good. St. Cloud puts themselves in position every year. They won by like half a point this year. It wasn't like a guaranteed thing for them that they were going to win a national title. There were five other teams that were really freaking good and really pushed them. So that's our next step is to just continually be in that conversation. And I think we're really very close to that. Um, but we got, we got to do that. Like I can keep talking about wanting to be in the top 10. We got to get in the top 10 here sometime soon. And then I think it becomes more and more believable for guys every year that now we can win a national title because we're right there. And we kind of structured our schedule that way this year to, to have guys go find out. It's the toughest schedule we've had hands down, no question since I've been there um, to the point where I, I worry that maybe we made it a little too top heavy. Um, but we're going to go find out how far away we are this year for sure. I think we have a team that we can, we can go do that. And I'm not guaranteeing that we are there, but we have a team that we need to go start finding out if we're there and not hope that we just get lucky at regionals. Wild, wild, man. It's crazy. I love the parody. The parody in D2 is wild. I covered it in 2014 when, um, Notre Dame college won it in Cleveland and the parody was just insane. And they won five. They won five titles in a row. They won fifty-seven through ninety-seven. I think it was. And it was crazy. still crazy. It was. It was close. Yeah. Yeah. And then you know, Car- uh, Terval talking about Carney. Carney won the national title when Terval. Terval had to win his match for Carney to win the team title. And, and hey, listen, Terval and Usman were on the team. <laughs> <laughs> and they won on the last match. Think about that, dude. It came down to the heavyweight again this year. It was unreal. Un- un- it was unreal every An Ohio year. guy, right? Wasn't it teacher? It was teacher. Teacher unreal. got it done. Unreal. That's cra- and he transferred. Yes. Oh wow, <laughs> that's so crazy that it comes down to an Ohio guy who just you know he just he, he couldn't get over the hump at Notre Dame. And I was like, why is he transferred? He can win at Notre Dame. They can win. And then, okay, I see why now. It worked out. <laughs> it did work out for him, for sure. Dude, that school had two national champions, Central Crossing, yeah. uh, Teacher, and Weimer. Yes, I, trust me, I know. We've, I, we've taken beatings from both of them for a couple of years now. I'm you, very aware of those you, guys. But you beat – no, Boggs beat Weimer, I want to say, uh, a couple of years ago. He did. He beat he beat Weimer, then Weimer beat him, and then Weimer All American. And you guys did. Uh, it. Right. You that, All American the year before though. When All American right. the year before, yeah. Yeah, you weren't there then. The Boggs Weimer matches were freaking wars. Yeah, I got a couple time. of them. I got a couple of them. <laughs> Two minute warning. What do you got? Yeah, I th- I think with where we're headed as a program, pe- people just need to watch. I'm not again, I'm not here to profess like We're going to go dominate the world this year. Ashland's good. Finley's good. Tiffin's good. And that's just our conference. I didn't even get into the rest of the region. Our region is insane. Um, So people need to watch D2 wrestling because there's going to be some fun wrestling that happens this year. Um, Some of it's going to be right in people's backyard. So they need to be paying attention. I'm I'm cool with guys getting overlooked and and falling into our lap too. I'm good with that. But um, D2 wrestling is really freaking good. Like really, really freaking good. This isn't even like me trying to oversell it. Like, man, it is, it's, it's legit. (laughs) Like I, it's more legit every year. It gets harder every year. And with the transfer portal being as crazy as it is, I think it gets even harder because there are guys look at that. We're like legitimate D1 starters that maybe don't have homes anymore because 
there there's all this chaos in the transfer portal. Not sure if I love or hate the transfer portal yet. Um, I, I like kids having more access, but this is getting crazy too. So I, I, I don't know. I, I'm going to reserve some judgment on that for a couple of years and know whether I like it or hate it. Awesome coach. I love it. I love hearing about it. D2 wrestling is, it is awesome. And like I said, I think Terval and that, that whole situation was 08, 09. I want to say with him and Usman on the, the Carney team. I mean, that just tells you right there how good D2 is and the talent they've had. Obviously Joey Davis at uh, Notre Dame college. They've just had really good guys. And the parody, the parody is incredible. The parody is probably the most unbelievable thing to me because it's like, I can think of 10 teams off the top of my head right now that can win the D2 title. And I can think a lot of them are within a two and a half hour drive of here. You got West Lib, got UPJ, Pitt Johnstown. Gannon's got a great team. Mercyhurst has got a great team. You guys, obviously Notre Dame College, Ashland. I mean, what did he have? Five All-Americans this year at Ashland? Jeez, oh, Pete. Unreal. First year coach. I mean, what you guys are doing, you had your first All-American all in Northeast Ohio or Western PA. I mean, you know, Tiffin's obviously, they've got a national champ coming back. I mean, it's on Finley, Finley, they got a national champ coming back. It's unreal. It's on un- your conference is unreal. Your regional is wrong, by the way. I don't like it. It's, it's too, <laughs> because a lot of really good guys are left home. That's what I don't like about it. Yeah. I don't like it either, but I did learn quick. Um, as tough as I thought our region is, it's pretty brutal for about three or four other regions too. I, I got out of the we're the best region hands down game after about a year and a half. We might be on the same par, but there's about four regions out there that it's just freaking brutal no matter what. Um, I, I, I love the simplicity of, hey, be top three and go. I love that. I don't need to have like a, a math degree from Harvard to figure out if my guy's qualifying for nationals. But it'd be nice to take six guys in some of these weights too. It'd be real nice. Well, thanks, Coach. We appreciate you jumping on, especially on the short notice. And uh, always always good catching up. Um, I appreciate it, man. Always good chat. Yeah, thanks, guys. Coach Breeze, thanks for the time. Good luck to you guys. Ray John, all right? Ray John. Ray John.